Now, as the Monetary Policy Committee meeting begins today in Abuja, the renewed inflationary pressure in the country is expected to be part of a key focus. At its last meeting, the MPC had decided to cut uh, the benchmark monetary policy rates by 50 basis points. That's been after it stayed for more than two years. But analysts that projected inflation rates will further move upwards in the months of May and June. I mean, it's Ramadan festivities and the signs of a uh, new minimum wage uh, bill. To look critically at this, I have an economic analyst, Emeka Okengu, who joins me from Abuja Studios Live, and also the Chief Executive Officer of Kari Assets Limited, Mr. Johnson Chuku, who joins me via Skype uh, from Lagos. Uh, Mr. Johnson, let me start with you. Now, before we go into the NPC meeting, NBS is out 2.01% first quarter of 2019. I want to quickly get your view on this before we move on. Well, um, interestingly, the figure of 2.01% that we saw in the first quarter of this year indicates that uh, we see a slowdown in uh, GDP growth rate. I mean, we saw a GDP growth rate in the last quarter of last year at 2.38%. Uh, so to have declined to 2.01% uh, simply means that the economy needs additional stimulus, uh, that we, we need to uh, inject additional liquidity into the economy by the forms of credit so as to stimulate uh, faster economic growth rate. Um, and I think the MPC will take this into consideration in arriving at the decision that, uh, uh, they will, that will be announced tomorrow. Okay, uh, Mr. Okengo, I'm going to ask you the same question. What's your direct reaction to this figure? Yes, though, uh, a little bit of growth in agriculture and all of that, but with this figure dropping from last quarter's figure, 2.38, uh, like uh, Mr. Johnson just identified, what is responsible for this figure that we have at this time? Well, uh, <coughs> figures would always drop, okay? Figures dropping or figures rising, uh, what they are, they are figures. They are supposed to uh, probably be a response to the outcomes of your, you know, policy engagements. Okay, uh, there are even countries who have been able to even do best when their economy slides into recessions. So instead of now dealing with the figures, I think what is important for us to be able to do is to be able to look at the outcomes of these figures. Uh, is it a death sentence? No, it is not. With the economic figures always rise and fall, yes, you know, against all the indicators, they will keep rising and they will keep uh, you know, falling. But it's all about the policies and the programs we do to stabilize them. Well, Mr. Gengo, now let, let, my next question goes to uh, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, now the meeting is on, and many are saying that the renewed inflationary pressure uh, may force MPC to hands on. In, uh, interest rates. I don't know if you agree with this uh, term, this submission. Yes, I share the opinion that uh, the, the new inflationary pressure will compel or constrain the MPC from further reducing interest rates immediately. Um, but it, it didn't come as a surprise to the uh, Monetary Policy Committee members. I mean, if you look, listen to the announcement of the Monetary Policy Committee decision of uh, um, January 2010, in 19, the CBN government making an announcement it stated that they expect that inflation will trade northwards from the month of March uh, down to the month of May. And interestingly, though that didn't happen in March, but we saw it, an upward movement in inflation in the month of April from 11.25% to 11.37%. So the Monetary Policy Committee had weighed in or considered the fact that the pressure, the inflationary pressure in the coming months, but they decided to reduce the interest rate. But having, given that the inflation pressure has materialized at a time when the implementation of the minimum, min, minimum wage has not even taken place, one should expect that it's a higher uh, downward risk, uh, or there's a downward risk of higher inflation in the coming months. So given that factor, and the Monetary Policy Committee are, like, are likely going to decide to hold it uh, when they also consider the fact that the economy is growing at a slower rate, that the economic growth was only 2.01%, and it is not yet, it is still shy of the population rate of 2.7%. So the key thing that we do, major thing that we, they bring into cognition are this. The economy has slowed down its rate of growth from 2.38% to 2.01%. At the same time, so the economy needs a stimulus. But at the same time, we've seen an upward movement in inflation rate. So the economy also needs a break to avoid further moving inflation. So this is a quagmire that they have to contend with. 
It's a conflict they have to balance. And I think the way to balance it is to hold rates at the meantime and watch how the inflation would perform as the government implements the minimum, new minimum wage. If inflation, uh, uh, once that in, new minimum wage is implemented, that will give the Monetary Policy Committee, maybe in their uh, um, July meeting, an opportunity to weigh the impact of that increase in wage bill on inflation and then also look at um, how to stimulate the economy further without necessarily uh, pushing inflation to a, a faster growth rate. We need to want to build the economy. At the same time, we need to moderate the inflation. But I think, on a balance, what the Monetary Policy Committee see, did at the last meeting was to say, look, we are ready to sacrifice uh, inflation uh, to stimulate the economy. And that is kind of what the CDN governor said at uh, the uh, convocation of UNN, um, United, I mean, um, UNN, that is the uh, University of Nigeria Soccer where the CBN governor said that uh, the economy requires uh, credit stimulus, the economy requires cheap credit, lower uh, price credit as to grow at a faster rate. So, but that will go with an uptick in inflation. So the key thing that they have to balance is what is priority to the government. Is it to stimulate economic growth, even if it has to cover the cost of inflation, or to keep the inflation if that will come at the, at the cost of uh, slower economic growth? I want to believe that the way in favor of a stronger economic growth if we have, even if we have to live with the high inflation rate. Great, Mr. Okengo. Now, uh, with this renewed inflationary pressure, which many say may force uh, MPC to hands on interest rates, like you said, there are figures, but the figures actually worry the business community at some particular time. Now, how well do you see this uh, committee pursuing an accommodating monetary policy uh, opposed to tightening uh, our yeah. policies that have been on before now? To focus is that, I mean, it's just not only about monetary policy. Remember that that committee also focuses on price stability. And it's also important to note that I think the last time you know, the NPR rates were changed was in 2016. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, why I keep focusing on that uh, it's important to know that uh, these are figures. And, you know, in your intro, it's just I didn't hear you very well. You had listed out a lot of, you know, the factors or variables that could have led, you know, to this uh, either drop or rise in percentages. So what's, what's key is that uh, we are... Uh, starting a new race, if you may, uh, a lot of uh, the monetary policies of government uh, has to now, or a lot of uh, the fiscal policies of government has to now be properly balanced by, you know, the monetary policies of the CBN, and then probably now put, you know, into context your trade policies and your development policies. Now, these are the things you need to put into perspective to be able to get a proper cocktail, a proper bouquet of what can now begin to now make you take the decisions on either your applause or cocktail, a proper bouquet of what can now begin to now make you take the decisions on either your applause or minus uh, you know, basis points. So what I'm trying to say is that it's most likely that uh, the CBN uh, will leave uh, the rates as it is now, you know, changing it to what extent? How is that going to help you know, lending to banks? Because already uh, people are complaining that even the 14 percent that you are operating at now is a little bit high, you know, uh, if you start calculating your return on investment. So I think they are going to leave it the way it is. I also think, like I said to you, uh, this is like a, a storm thing. It's not going to last for a, for a very long time. Uh, if the CBN focuses, you know, truly on its policies, like uh, the new policies is bringing, I think with time, you know, we're going to be stabilizing more. But let me and follow you up on that, uh, Mr. Okengu. Issues around disruptions from the global scene is something that is beyond our control yeah. in this part of the world. Getting a stabilized True. economy, how prepared is Nigeria for shocks uh, when we're already seeing figures like this coming up? How prepared do you think we are for global shocks at this now, point? It, it, it gets more worrisome where, you know, you find out that a lot of the focus is even between America and China. And then you find out that these distortions are also now as a result of, you know, the trade war. And what is the trade war? Trade war is all about, you know, what you are adding on as taxes, okay? Now, what should worry us as a country is what are we, to what extent are we playing in this, 
what you see playing out now, which is what is called politics of international economic relations. Okay? And what do I mean by that? What are we bringing to the table? Okay, how can we as a country be able to benefit, you know, from this, uh, you know, trade war uh, between these two major, you know, uh, countries uh, who seem to form a, a major focus on nucleus of how we are also now, you know, uh, reviewing our own price stability. So, are we ready? Well, from my personal opinion, I would say we're not very ready. Uh, what do I mean that we're not very ready? Uh, but are we, can, are we, can we be able to make some, some noises? Yes. Can we be able to gain, make some tractions out of this? Yes. All we need to do is to be able to probably deepen what it is we are doing right now. And then, especially in the area of agriculture. Yes, agriculture uh, has its inputs. Okay. Uh, has what you might be able to call the raw material outputs. To what extent are we able to, you know, value process those raw materials coming out to start actually playing, you know, globally? That will be able to help us. Okay. What are we bringing to the table? What are we bringing? What are we going to be struggling this market share with? That's also very, very important. To the, are we very ready, you know, to be able to engage? No. But have we gotten the policies that may be able to lead us in that uh, path? I think. I think I'll give a. I'll give a CBN especially. Uh, a, a, a plus, okay. okay, to that extent that okay, hold your thoughts. We have some Let policies me. that if we pursue well, we might be able to, you know, hedge the storm. Okay, hold your thoughts now, Mr. Kengu. Let me go to uh, back to Lagos here now, where Mr. Johnson Chuku is standing by. Mr. Johnson, before now, we've had issues around the fiscal side and the monetary side, talking about synergy here. Uh, how well would you say we've moved on uh, before now, where there were some issues talking about how we can really achieve this? all-inclusive growth that we talk about? I do not say much. I don't think uh, they have made any major improvement on the fiscal side. Um, we've not seen any major fiscal pronouncement. We've not seen any uptick in the implementation of any of the fiscal tools. Recall that the major fiscal tool you have for that the fiscal authorities use is the budget. As we speak today, I'm not aware that the budget has been signed into law. We're well, in the fifth month of the year. So the budget is not yet being implemented. The budget of 2018 may still be uh, running, and it does not show that there is a, a reasonable level of physical um, um, direction, because the key to the need to say that direction is the, to, uh, the budget, and that is uh, still um, lying fallow between the National Assembly and the presidency. Uh, so if you ask me, I would think, uh, I hope that in the new dispensation, the government will harmonize its um, economic policies by ensuring that the fiscal tool is more effectively used, um, starting from the budget, and then you look at the trade policies of the government, which will include issues like customs, uh, tariffs, and excise duties. Uh, until that becomes very active, I, I think uh, what we are witnessing in the economy today is that um, the monetary policy seems to be the most critical, important to our most uh, a relevant tool that we are seeing being deployed to manage the economy. And that's why we're seeing in instances where the monetary policy is straight into the rim of the fiscal uh, policy in the absence of a, a fiscal policy uh, direction. Mr. Johnson, how, how well are we prepared for global shocks? Anything could happen, crude oil price and all of that. What do we look at? Well, I think uh, now we are relatively in a, a, a good position. We have about 44.5 billion dollars in foreign reserve. Um, even if uh, you exist, even if the foreign portfolio doesn't exist, we should still have enough to cover more than three months of uh, import. And uh, I don't imagine uh, that uh, we're going to see a major erosion in our reserves in the immediate, on, unless we have a very severe economic crisis or political crisis. Um, I think the economy is in a better position to weather. Um, any major uh, economic or global economic of uh, But be that as it may, it depends on how long it lasts uh, and to what they say is the fact on the crude price. But I'm not saying we also have to be cautious of the fact that one of the key elements of our economic stability is the crude production. So beyond the issue of crude price, we must make sure we maintain a reasonable level of peace and tranquility in the Niger Delta so that crude production will continue to uh, improve. If you look at the GDP figure that was just announced today, you saw that the GDP um, crude oil production declined from 1.98% in the last quarter of last year, that is the fourth quarter of 2018, to 1.96%. Uh, 
and let that led to a, a contraction in the oil and gas sector, uh, where you saw a contraction of 2.4 percent in the oil and gas sector. So we need to uh, improve on production, reduce the level of the, num the number of breaches of the pipelines, and ensure that all the all the all the pipelines are working and that they. The crude wells are also pumping, so as to further grow and stabilize the economic economic environment. Mr. Johnson, Chukwu, Chief Executive Officer, Kari Assets Nigeria Limited, and Emeka Okwengu, uh, economist live from Abuja. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for putting all of this into perspective for us on Business Nigeria this Monday.